Fermentation is one of the oldest food processing technologies in the world. It goes back thousands of years. What you need is a raw food stuff called the substrate and some microbes. And the microbes metabolize compounds in, in the raw food and transform them. Think of the difference between raw milk and cheese. Most of them were discovered largely by accident and it's given us an enormous variety of fermented foods, things like bread, cheese, miso, soy sauce, sauerkraut, kimchi. Oh, beer and wine, obviously, I forgot those two. There are hundreds of them. But there is a revolution going on in fermentation technology being called fermentation 2.0. And for the first time in human history, what we've got are novel ferments. So this is using substrates that haven't been fermented before, using microbes that have not been used in fermentation before, or taking things that have been fermented before but using different microbes or using the same microbes on different substrates. And what we're gonna to do today is try some of the fruits of this amazing fermentation revolution. To help me try some of these new ferments, I'm gonna introduce my colleague Ali, who's gonna bring over some brand new miso products. So miso is a traditional Japanese uh, umami paste um, and it's usually made by growing a mold onto white rice and then transferring that onto soybeans, salt, and some, often some other compounds. But what we also have here today is a brand new miso called a piso, and the reason it's called a piso will become apparent quite quickly. So this is from the famous Copenhagen restaurant Noma. Um, what they did was to take the molds that are used to make traditional miso, but applied them to a different kind of pulse. In this case, yellow split peas. They also tried other kinds of uh, Scandinavian pulses. We're gonna try the traditional miso. I've actually never tried traditional miso. And I love this. Salty. Sharp. Sharp and powerful. Mm. Oh, yeah, lovely. Okay, let's try the piso. the piso. Do you wanna give it a go, Ellie? Okay, yeah, yeah. It's sweeter and not quite mm. sharp. I've got to say, that is absolutely delicious. But it's got legs on it. It's got lots of um, different Lo complexities. Lots of stuff going on in there. That's a, that's a hey, that's a success. Sorry, Miso, your days are done. We'll next go to soy sauce. It's brewed in a not dissimilar way to Miso, similar moulds, but on soybeans and wheat. But what we've got today is a new kind called Nordic soy sauce. Soy sauce. <laughs> Again, from Noma in Copenhagen. Now, this is made in the same way as traditional soy sauce, but instead of soybeans and wheat, it uses fava beans and toasted rice. And I, I'm quite curious about this. So we're gonna pop them into some glasses to just to get a look at the color, and then we'll drink them. Quite a difference already. One of the aims of Fermentation 2.0 is just to produce different kind of colors and textures. We'll start with the yeah. traditional one. Yeah. I mean, it just smells like soy sauce. Yep, yeah. very Give familiar. Sip. Wow, that's also heavily salty. Yeah. Mm, I think one of the aims with this one is to be less salty. Less salty. I mean, that is so different. It's aromatic, mm. it's sweet. It's a different thing altogether. I mean, you wouldn't recognise that as being soy sauce, even though it's brewed in the same way. So I'll give this a taste. Yeah. That is actually pretty salty. Is it? <laughs> it's delicious, though. I mean, you get a very different kind of underneath to it. Um, Ooh, I mean, it's much more powerful tasting than it smells. Again, that is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Right, so what should we taste next? My favourite, and possibly yours, cheese. Cheese, okay. Cheese is a classic fermented food. Uh, blue cheese is kind of double fermented, in that the cheese is made, and then it's, it's what's called ripened with these moulds that give it this kind of amazing blue colour and flavour. But for hundreds if not thousands of years, those moulds have been exactly the same. They're propagated asexually, so there's no genetic variation in them. So a Roquefort mould, a Gorgonzola mould, a Stilton mould, they're always the same and they always have been. But a few years ago, this team at the University of Nottingham found a way to make these moulds breed sexually. And that introduces lots and lots of genetic variety. So we've got a standard Gorgonzola, which we bought in the high street earlier which we'll taste first. Are you a fan of blue cheese? I love blue cheese. Good. It's already getting a bit whiffy around here, <laughs> which is a good sign, I think. Yeah, that is it's, it's lovely. Yeah. It's got the real sort of classic blue, 
flavour which one of the scientists described to me as that sweaty socks flavour. Well, that's not going to stop being good, whatever this one's like. Shall we try the, um, mm -hmm. the modified gorgonzola? Wow. A beautiful cheese, a lot of cheese. Yes. <laughs> I'll right. give you a bit of this, Ali. Uh -huh. So prepare mm. yourself. Right. That is so intense. Wow. Mmm. Wow. But it's also, again, a sort of fruity, mm. aromatic, sweet. And usually when you ramp up the blueness of a cheese, you just get all of the bad stuff with all the good stuff. But that is just absolutely yeah. delicious. And it's sort of ringing, the, yeah. the flavours are ringing and ringing. Yeah. yeah. Some professional cheese tasters said it was the best blue cheese they've ever tasted. And I'm inclined to agree with them. Okay, last of all, three different versions of a Danblau or a Danish blue as we know it in this country. And these are again made with these new strains of uh, blue cheese mould. And I think we'll try and do a blind taste test. So what we've got is a, a creamy one, a mild one, and an intense one, so I won't look. So, these are made with three different types of the penicillium forti mould, giving three different flavour profiles. So I'm gonna give you this one first. There you go. It's good. Very similar to the classic um, gorgonzola that we tried first. Okay. Uh, again, slightly sweeter, I think. Okay, this is your second one. Right. Well, that doesn't taste particularly blue to me, that one. But I think I know what's coming next. <laughs> OK, well, let's try this one. Yeah, pow! Wow. Oh, that is super pungent. Did I get them the right yes, way around? Yes, you did. <laughs> they developed a kind of super mould uh, that kind of really produces all the flavour. So that is so flavoursome. I mean, for lovers of blue cheese, that's like a dream come true, because it, mm. it has everything that you want but turn up to 11. Mm, that's yeah, definitely turned really up good. to 11. Mm. Yeah. One of the goals of Fermentation 2.0 is to create new flavour profiles, mm. things that have never been tasted before. In fact, some of the new ferments, they use food waste. They'll take things that were otherwise going to go to landfill or be turned into animal feed and turned into human food, which are the, uh, really helpful to help me to solve this huge food waste problem that we've got. But they could have health benefits too. I mean, most of you may have heard about yeah, the, the, the health halo that's around fermented foods. Products like yoghurt are linked with um, better health, reduction in levels of heart disease and I think type 2 diabetes. And it could be that the new um, compounds in new fermented products, we don't know for sure, but are likely to have health benefits too. There's a whole new uh, world of new combinations that are waiting to be discovered, aren't they? Well, microbes that have never been used in fermentation before, yeah. they're out there. You know, who knows what will be, will be invented over yeah. the next few years. What's to not like about fermentation 2.0? could be any great mystery to you. It just Whoa. tastes like gorgonzola. Yes. <laughs> I wish I got that on camera. 